Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to answer a viewer's question and this question is does rank matter as far as PhD is concerned and this is essentially talking about the university rank. Now you know that over the last decade or so many rankings have come up for universities. There is the QS ranking, there is the Shanghai ranking, there is the times ranking and so on and what has happened is that different metrics are used for these rankings typically they look at the publications are these papers being published in the top journals in the high impact journals in journals such as nature science and cell they also look at the faculty at the university are these people nobel prize winners are these people fellows of various professional bodies and so on what is their H index, what is their citation. They also look at the representation of foreign faculty and foreign students in the university. So there are various metrics out here and you need to keep these metrics in mind before you look at any kind of ranking system because these metrics are going to have an impact on the ranking. Now, of course, nobody would disagree with any of these metrics. All these metrics do have some indication of quality so that is something to keep in mind now if we look at one of the rankings so i have picked up here the times ranking and take a look at it we are going to see some clear patterns so for example the times ranking is as follows number one is university of oxford uk number two harvard university us number three university of cambridge uk number four stanford university us number five MIT US, number six Caltech US, number seven Princeton US, number eight UC Berkeley US, number nine Yale University US, number 10 Imperial College UK. So you can see that UK and US universities are among the top 10 universities here. In fact, in the top 10 list, there are three universities from the United Kingdom or from Britain and the remaining seven universities are from the United States. So the UK universities are Oxford, Cambridge and Imperial College. Now, if we go further down the list, we can start discovering some universities which are not from these two Anglo-Saxon countries. So at number 11, you have ETH Zurich in Switzerland. At number 16, you have Tsinghua University in China. Number 17, you have Peking University in China. Number 18, you have University of Toronto in Canada. And number 19, you have NUS or National University of Singapore. So essentially you see that these universities are top ranked and I would say that the different rankings always bring out some of these universities at the top. And in general, if you ask various people around the world, they are going to agree on the top 10 for most of these universities and so what do you do if you are a person who is not doing his or her PhD from these universities does it impact your career prospect does it impact your future chances and what can you do about it so of course if you are from one of these universities I would congratulate you because you have a head start on the other people and you need to take full advantage of that now there are a couple of factors I'm going to discuss about the ranking and the PhD. Now the number one issue is local versus global. So essentially if you are somebody in the US for example and you are a PhD student then certainly you have severe competition from PhDs coming out of all these top universities because many of the top universities are in the US. And therefore what often happens and you will see that in various universities around the US is that the faculty is disproportionately from these top schools. So you will find a large number of Stanford, MIT, Berkeley graduates in different US universities. So that is certainly an issue. Now if you are in UK for example, certainly if you are applying for any faculty position, people from Cambridge, Oxford and Imperial College are likely to get an advantage. But often what happens in faculty positions is that people do not typically apply globally. 
So in that situation, there are many parts of the world which really do not care so much about ranking. So for example, if you are in some country like Japan, it may not matter a whole lot as to what is the ranking of your university because though University of Tokyo and such universities are pretty well ranked as far as the Japanese system is concerned because most of the work goes on in Japanese, it's very likely that the Japanese PhDs will get a big advantage there. But what has started happening, of course, is that many of the people from these top universities are also foreign students and they often go back to their home countries. So, for example, a large number of these people may be from India, China, South Korea and so on. And therefore, what will happen is that many of these guys are going to go back to their home countries because there are only so many jobs out there in the US and UK systems. And then, of course, they are going to create a lot of competition for the local people there. So what do the local people do? Now, one of the things they can do if they have done PhD from some of the local universities in some of these countries like India, China, South Korea, Taiwan and so on, is they can try to do a postdoctoral stint at one of these top places because that is always possible. The second thing they can do, of course, is to embellish their publication list because if you have papers in top journals that can many a time am ameliorate the situation which is caused by ranking of universities and so on. So generally, if you have a lot of good journal papers, that's always going to come out as a positive thing to any selection committee. So a large part of this ranking problem can be dissipated if you are able to publish papers in good journal. Now, the second aspect is if you are applying to industry versus the academia or the academic system. Now, in most cases, I would say ranking matters a lot in the university system. And as I have told you before, university professors tend to be all these guys who are very impressed by the rank of the university. And I have seen people very often select a candidate who is from a top university. Now, the reason for this is that the admission process, the selection process at top universities is very rigorous, very tough. And also the coursework there, the qualifying exam, the comprehensive exam are all very difficult. So what happens is that it's actually pretty difficult to get a PhD from a very top university, for example, MIT, compared to getting a PhD from a very normal level university. So this is a fact of life which we have to deal with. It's not always true, but in most cases it is true and therefore the selection committees are always biased toward hiring people from the top university. Now, if you are going to the companies, actually the reverse can often be the case. Very often the companies are looking for skills and they are looking for people who are amenable, affable, social, who can get along with their colleagues and do teamwork. And most of the time, the people at the top universities tend to be very single-minded, very focused, somewhat like stars. They can have narcissism as a quality. And so some of these can, in fact, have a negative impact on the company type of atmosphere. So very often, people from regular universities often make better candidates as far as companies are concerned and you will often find that the companies will only go for skills. So if they are looking for a person, let us say in genomics, they will look at the guy who is pretty good in genomics and they are going to recruit this guy. And they also want to make sure that this person is actually happy getting this job because sometimes what happens if you recruit a person from a very top university into your lab, this person may not be very satisfied there. He or she may still be in love with writing papers and the university system. And so after a couple of years or a year, they may again go back and join a university somewhere else. So they actually do not want to lose this couple of years of training. They want to retain this guy for a long time. So one of the best strategies is to hire people from regular universities or from normal ranked universities. And in most cases that turns out to be better. Now, I'll just give you an anecdote which I experienced when I was in Singapore doing my sabbatical and I met various professors from NTU and NUS. And these guys were telling me that though we have very high ranking, the fact remains that 
as far as many CEOs are concerned of top companies, even Google and Microsoft, they are Indians who have graduated from institutes such as the Indian Institute of Technology, the Manipal Institute of Technology, and so on. And these universities are often not ranked very well. So how did that happen? Now, you need to keep in mind that the ranking is largely based on graduate level performance. It is based on publications. It is based on impact factor of journals. It is based on Nobel Prize winners being at the university. And also there is some thing factored in for foreign students and foreign professors being at the university, which is not the case in many countries, for example, the countries may actually prohibit employment of large number of foreign people and students because they have too many of their own students to take care of. So essentially you can see that a lot of the corporate success is essentially dependent on good bachelor degree and good master's degree level. So again, there are a lot of people with good bachelor's degree from many places which are not there in these ranking and they have gone on and done very well in the corporate world. So this is something you need to keep in mind. Does ranking matter for a university as far as PhD is concerned? So I would say it does as far as universities are concerned, but as far as industry is concerned, it doesn't. And if you are somebody who is not in such a well-ranked university today, you can compensate by publishing more papers, trying to get more prizes and so on. You can also compensate by trying to get named fellowships such as the Humboldt Fellowship, the JSPS Fellowship, the Fulbright Fellowship, the Banting Fellowship or any good postdoctoral fellowship. And in these fellowships, try to target the top 20 or top 25 institutions in the world in terms of ranking where you would like to go. And then you can go there and then you can certainly look better as far as your CV is concerned in the eyes of the selection committee. So this was my take on this issue today and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.